Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I just talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today we're going to be talking about 10 more Criterion Flash Sale recommendations. Now, I will say, the Criterion Flash Sale has not happened yet, and when I'm putting this up, I don't think it will be this day either. Uh, to be fair, I think it will be early March. Now, there actually has, in the past, been a few flash sales that have happened early March. So that's what the pattern looks like, is it's going to be either this Tuesday, which may be doubtful, or next Tuesday. That's what I think is going to be the case. But regardless, I wanted to share with you uh, some 10 more picks uh, for recommendations for uh, the Criterion 24-hour flash sale that happens on their website. So with that being said, I just want to point out to everyone what I did last time. So I actually did a video last time where I was talking about 10 recommendations for this flash sale. Five of them were essential classics that I think everyone should have in their collection. And then there were five that I think are not as, they're less known, um, some classics for some people, but these are lesser known titles that I think everyone should give a, a check out and uh, should put in their cart, right? So with this, it's gonna be the same kind of concept, except for this time, I'm going to be talking exclusively about uh, box sets and also, um, you know, digipacks and, and things like that. So that's what I'm gonna be trying to go for, not the standard Blu-ray case, um, you know, Amore case that we're seeing right uh, to the left and right of me. So anyway, let's jump into my 10 releases. Let's start off with an essential first. So starting this list off is 1968's classic Night of the Living Dead from J George A. Romero. I almost said his name wrong, uh, but this is spy number 909. So it's a relatively recent release in the last couple of years, but this is a phenomenal film. This is a classic film in the, in the zombie sense, but also a classic film in uh, in American sense, right? Uh, but this movie, you know, like I said, came out in 1968, a very tumultuous time. And it definitely uh, really kind of showcased a lot of the things going on, even though I know George A. Romero has said, hey, I, when I made this film, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't really going for that necessarily. But Dwayne Jones does a phenomenal job too, as one of our leads right here. Um, and I, I, you know, this is just like one of those zombie staple films that uh, I, honestly, I, I cannot wait to watch the further uh, dead films that uh, George A. Romero has done. Yes, shocker, I haven't seen them yet, but I have some, you know, and uh, very happy about that. But yes, Night of the Living Dead, uh, it's an epic film, and honestly, this is uh, a, an essential in everyone's collection. All right, next we're going to move to a film that I think is less known. It's not a film that is talked about too often, but it is from 2013. It is The Great Beauty, or... Uh, it's an Italian film, so it's going to say La Grande Bellizia. So, Jep uh, Gam Gambardella, who is played by Tony Cervello, uh, is a rich uh, socialite who is kind of coming towards, I think, his 65th birthday, and he is realizing that all this lavish lifestyle that he has been uh, really living is kind of really meaningless, and uh, which is pretty like well known for a lot of us thinking, like, okay, well, duh, like, you know. Uh, we're, you know, doing all these different things and having parties and, and, and dancing and whatnot. So it is a really rich film in the sense of uh, the characters themselves, but also in the atmosphere and in the music and in the architecture you could see just based on this, uh, you know, this cover right here. But uh, Jep is really just trying to figure it out himself. And it is uh, 142 minutes, so it's, it's a little bit rather long. It's in, uh, two hours and a half uh, about. But yeah, it's actually a really fantastic film, and I was actually really blown away when I watched it for the first time. And there's a lot of really cool sequences in here as well. Uh, and yeah, it's one that I don't think I hear much people talk about, but it's a really great digipack right here. Um, and uh, yeah, this is spy number 702, and I think it's definitely uh, deserves a spot on your shelf. All right, so moving right along to more essential films. Yeah, films, it's all in a box. It's three fantastic films by Carol Zeman. Oh my God, I, I, I love this box set. And I've talked about this uh, ad nauseum on this, on this channel, but if you're new here, you have no idea how much I love this. So stop motion animation, Carol Zeman uh, is a Czech filmmaker uh, who uh, lot, used a lot of stop motion, but these films from 1955, 1958, and 1962 respectively are just phenomenal. So the first film right here is Journey to the Beginning of Time. Uh, then we have Invention for Destruction. And we have the fa fabulous Baron Munchausen, which this is a really great release. Uh, it's got that 3D looking thing. Uh, but also speaking of 3D, uh, look at look at these this still right here. There you go, Wooly Mammoth right there with some four kids. Now I will say with the first film, 1955, Journey to the Beginning of Time, 
I actually have a memory of the American version, which actually is on this disc, by the way. I think it's the 1960, yep, The Journey to the Beginning of Time from 1960, the U.S. release. I remember watching it uh, when I was a child, and uh, so I have a really early memory with this, this movie. Then we have Invention for Destruction, which also has a sweet little pop-up right there with a... Uh, hot air balloon, and then we have the fa fabulous Baron Munchausen, which is right out of a cannonball. So I, I, I really think this is really inventive, uh, and also just a really great set, and I, this has a lot of really great shorts from Carol Zeman, and then also just has a really bunch of special features, just talking about stop motion in general, and I think it's an essential film in people's collection, just for the sheer fact of the creativity and the artistry at, at work here. So check out Three Fantastic Journeys by Carol Zeman, if you have not picked this one up. All right, moving right along to another film that I don't think is necessarily talked about enough, although this is probably an essential for a lot of people, uh, and especially an essential Japanese film. This one's from 1954. This is spy number 386, so it's an early one in the collection, and is by Kenji Mizuguchi, and I'm talking about Sancho the Bailiff. Wow, this movie is, uh, it's a hard one to watch, but it's also, you know, a little bit uplifting in the same sense. So, um, Sancho the Bailiff is about um, this, this corruption that has gone too far, obviously, in, in the feudal system here. Uh, and we're seeing, you know, our, our main protagonist uh, trying to figure out a way to save his family and also get through this, uh, this, this corruption. And, um, you know, I think this is just, um, you know, a really great expression like from Mizuguchi, and I, and I really, really love it. So uh, this is a really great uh, release right here. And I think, like I said, a lot of people should definitely have this one in the collection. And like I said, it's an early release, but so it's a little bit bare bones in when it comes to the special features, but there are quite a bit of things in here. And there's a really great booklet that comes with it as well. Um, a lot of really great sequences. Um, and this booklet is thick. So certainly worth checking out if you haven't seen Sh Sancho the Bailiff. It's worth a watch. All right, moving right along to more essential films. So this is a trilogy, actually, from Sajitet Ray, and I hope I said that right, <laughs> correctly. It's an Indian filmmaker. This is from 1955, 1956, and 1959, respectively. I'm talking about the Apu trilogy. Now, this is a really fantastic, neorealistic classic, uh, especially for Indian cinema. So, Apu trilogy is obviously centered around Apu, and Apu is uh, this little boy in the first film, which is Pather Panchali uh, from 1955. And that is uh, one of uh, the most neorealistic uh, of the films. I mean, they're all that way. But anyway, he's, he's a little kid in a, in a small village. And uh, eventually, as we see through progressing through the films, uh, Aparjito, uh, the Unvanquished, and Apur Sansar, which is the last one, the world of Apu, these uh, we see him come to a, you know a young man and also going through the the familial relationships the the sexual relationships all the all those things going on uh, in his life and you see that uh, transform uh, with uh, with Apu and it is just um, it's sad it's triumphant uh, it's everything you want from a trilogy and the Apu trilogy uh, is a, an essential classic and I think everyone deserves to check this one out if you haven't. All right, next is a set of six films, and I will say this real quick. Uh, for sales, I think box sets are really, really good to pick up, uh, especially when they're half-priced, right? Uh, now, this is one that I think is not necessarily talked about as much as it used to be talked about, um, but it is something that I just was blown away by when I watched it uh, a few years back. And I'm talking about America Lost and Found, the BBS story, which has six, six films. It has the movie Head, Easy Rider, Five Easy Pieces, Drive, He Said, A Safe Place, The Last Picture Show, and The King of Marvin Gardens. Now, there's a lot of films in here that are like deemed essential, right? We have Easy Rider in here. We have The Last Picture Show. Uh, these are, you know, these are classic films that everyone needs to watch. But uh, besides that, there are a lot of fun ones in here as well, like Head, right? Head is a hilarious film, uh, you know, with the monkeys in it. Uh, but we also have, you know, really great essential films from the, you know, the late 60s and the early 70s. So, um, you know, uh, 68 all the way to 72. Uh, and this is just a, a, a huge box set with so much to cover in this in this this thing right here. And I certainly, certainly recommend this box set just to go through the journey uh, of the time period in America during the late 60s and the early 70s. I think I actually kind of highlighted that earlier on. But America, Lost and Found, the BBS story, an essential that everyone needs in their collection. All right, these next three films, if you're, if you're new here, you don't know how much I love this. This is my second favorite trilogy of all time. 
uh, besides Lord of the Rings, and I'm talking about Richard Linklater's The Before Trilogy. Now this is one of my favorite uh, box sets of all time. I just think it's gorgeous. I love all three films, Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight. 1995, 2004, and 2013 are when these came out, and these are all set nine years apart uh, actu in, in actuality, too, and in the story between Ethan Hawke and Julie Delphi, who uh, meet up in Before Sunrise uh, on a happenstance train in Europe, and eventually, you know, you see their uh, their romance blossom and, and you know, wilt, and just go all over the place, and uh, it, it just seems like a a really lovely uh, set of films that also can break your heart. So anyway, Before Trilogy, let's look at the lists right here. So we have Before Sunrise right here, and in that one, there is actually a little booklet uh, of Julie Delphi and Ethan Hawke, and also Richard Linklater on the back, talking about their journey. Before Sunset, which is my personal favorite of the films, and then Before Midnight right here, um, which is a lot like um, Bergman's film that I'm blanking on right now. I mean, just scenes from a marriage, right? So that's kind of, uh, there's, there's parts of that in, in that in that film. So anyway, before trilogy, uh, I don't think I've sold it enough. This is a phenomenal romantic uh, trilogy uh, that really just uh, has uh, the relationship on, on full display. Uh, their conversations that they have, it's long-winded, it's, it's in a long form. There are definitely, you know, some soliloquies and some, you know, uh, hyper hyperbole and dramatization going on uh, but it is certainly worth your time and it's like it's, I don't know you just fall in love with the characters and you fall in love with what they're doing so and you also hate them too for some of the, the decisions that they make but before, the before trilogy absolutely an amazing uh, set of films I love them you should too please check these out if you haven't all right so this next film is another one that I don't think is necessarily talked about enough especially from this filmmaker but it is one that I really really love and I'm talking about 2005's The New World from Terrence Malick. And this has, I'm trying to say her name correctly, uh, Karyanka Kilcher, who plays Pocahontas, and Colin Farrell, who plays John Smith, actually. So it's a Pocahontas tale, right? And, uh, oh my God, I love it. It's Obviously, it's a Terrence Malick film. So if you're not f familiar with Terrence Malick, he makes gorgeous films. Um, a lot of his films maybe are a little bit kind of all over the place with their narrative, but uh, I think uh, just uh, thematically his films are just gorgeous, and I think there's a really uh, great s sequences of uh, performances going on as well, uh, and I think The New World is uh, no exception here. And I really love this film. Christian Bales is also in this one as well, but uh, it's from 2005. It's 172 minutes, so it's rather long. It's by number 800 and 26. It's definitely a film that I think uh, deserves uh, a, a, some recognition and also uh, deserves some love. So the New World, please check it out if you haven't. All right. So this next one, I'm going to break my rule real quick. I'm going to talk. I'm going to save my last one uh, for the essential, and so I'm going to go back into uh, another film that deserves a little bit more recognition. Even though once again, this is a film that is certainly can be considered a classic for a lot of people, but I just had to talk about it because I love it that much. And I'm talking about Peter Weir's Picnic at Hanging Rock from 1975. This is an Australian classic. Oh my God, uh, where to start with this movie? It, it is an atmospheric beauty. Uh, it's about uh, these women uh, and they are out on a field trip and some of them disappear and they're at, pick, they're at Hanging Rock, which is a bunch of rock formations uh, with a lot of crevices and whatnot. And there's a lot of symbolism going on as well. Uh, and a lot of mystery and uh, atmosphere going on in this film itself. And there's this mystery that um, is, is kind of crazy because uh, this is kind of touted as something that actually happened, which, fun fact, it didn't. So, um, which actually for a while I thought actually did happen. But there's actually a book with this one. Uh, I don't know if this release is actually coming with the book anymore. Uh, I, I've seen it in two different versions, but uh, this is the one that I picked up, so I'm very happy that I did because the the novel by Joan Lindsay, uh, this is, that's what this is based off of. So I like Peter Weir, and uh, this is certainly like my one of my favorite things that, uh, you know, I love by him and uh, certainly recommend checking out if you haven't seen Picnic at Hanging Rock. And last but certainly not least is a box set that I think is like one of the box sets like that like really encapsulates the Criterion Collection. And I think one that like really got me hooked in the Criterion Collection even further um, from the few titles I had previously to this. But what I'm talking about is this bad boy, the Ingmar Bergman's Cinema, 
Um, this is a really phenomenal box set. Uh, this is the Persona picture right here, but this has so many films in it. Um, I think it has 39. Uh, don't quote me on that one. But this is a box set that I'm still going through, and I've had this for a, a long time. But I've loved, loved, loved Seven, Seven Seal and Wild Strawberries uh, from a long, long time ago before I even knew what the Criterion Collection was. Uh, and uh, then, you know, I just I've fallen in love with films uh, inside this box set, like Persona uh, and Summer with Monica and Scenes from a Marriage, uh, just to name a few. Right? There are so many films and gems to, to explore in this. And Swedish cinema is just uh, a goldmine. And Igmar Bergman, I love him or hate him, uh, he really set the tone for a lot of international cinema. And I really love this box set, and I think it's an essential in everyone's, everyone's uh, collection. So there's Igmar right there. So anyway, uh, I didn't want to hold that up uh, for too much longer, but I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you would recommend uh, for uh, people who are watching and also let me know what your favorites are and down in the comment section down below So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the sale comes soon uh, I hope you give it a like share hit the notification bell subscribe and I'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around <laughs>